Infrared spectroscopy, or IR, is an important technique in organic chemistry. As you have learned in both your organic laboratory and lecture courses, the IR spectrum of a compound gives important clues to its chemical structure. Also, the spectrum of a compound obtained in the laboratory can be compared with the published IR spectrum to verify the compound's identity. Several techniques are used for preparing samples for IR spectroscopy. Organic compounds that are liquid at room temperature are generally run as a thin film on salt plates. Solids can be run as a thin film, Nujol Mull, or in solution on salt plates, or pressed into a KBR pellet. We will demonstrate only two of these methods, thin liquid films and thin solid films. KBR pellets will be at the end of the video as a supplement. Part 1, Thin Liquid Films. This demonstration will begin with thin films which are run on salt plates. The plates we use are made of NaCl, common table salt, which has been pressed mechanically to form a large crystal. As you know, salt is very soluble in water. Conversely, the salt plates absorb water from the air and must be stored in a desiccator. A plate which has not been stored in a desiccator is foggy compared to a properly stored plate. Note how plates are held by their edges. This is critical because salt plates absorb water from your fingers. Never touch a salt plate on its face as you will leave a fingerprint. Salt plates are also very fragile and break readily when dropped. To prepare a thin film, use a Pasteur pipette to drop a small amount of the sample, in this case benzyl alcohol, on a salt plate. The plates are reversible, so there's no right or wrong side of the plate. Place another plate on top of the first. Note how the liquid spreads into a thin film. The thin film should be a uniform 0.1 millimeter thick. The salt plates are placed on the sample holder in the spectrometer. We'll show you how to run the instrument in detail later in this demonstration. For now, let's look at the spectrum of benzyl alcohol which we have just prepared. Compare this spectrum with benzyl alcohol run on mistreated plates. The pits on the mistreated plates will cause a thin film to be uneven. The radiation going through the sample will scatter causing the bands to be broad rather than sharp. In the case of fogged plates, fogginess will cut down on the radiation passing through the sample causing the spectral intensity to be attenuated. So the condition of a salt plate has a dramatic effect on the appearance of the FTIR spectrum. To clean the plates, open them up and place them with the dirty side up on some paper towels. Squeeze a little methylene chloride onto the tops of the plates, then wipe them with a Kim wipe. Never use water or acetone to clean salt plates. Place them back in the desiccator for storage. Part 2. Thin Solid Films Thin solid films are prepared in a manner similar to liquid films. Although the method does not work for all organic solids, we have found that it works for most of the products which you will isolate in this organic laboratory course. Place a small amount of the sample in a clean test tube. Add about a milliliter of methylene chloride to the test tube to dissolve the sample. Use a Pasteur pipette to place a drop of the solution on a salt plate. Note that you do not cover the thin solid film with a second salt plate. 
Allow the solvent to evaporate, then place the salt plate on the sample holder in the spectrometer. Observe the spectrum on the screen. This spectrum illustrates a proper thin solid film. If the concentration of the solid in solvent was too low, a spectrum with low intensities would be observed. In such a case, remove the salt plate from the spectrometer and add another drop of solution to the plate. After the solvent dries, rerun the spectrum on the spectrometer. Part 3, running an FTIR spectrum. FTIR stands for Fourier Transform Infrared. Earlier, infrared spectrometers were dispersive type instruments and employed an IR light source and a grating to disperse the wavelengths. The spectrum was obtained by slowly scanning the wavelengths by moving the grating and observing absorption by the functional groups of the compound. Modern FTIR instruments employ an interferometer to observe all of the absorptions in a very short period of time. Radiation containing all of the IR wavelengths is split into two beams, one a fixed length and the other a variable length. Recombination of the beams produces an interference pattern for each wavelength, which is a function of the variable beam path length. The sum of the individual interference patterns for each wavelength produced from changing the path length is called an interferogram. Absorption by the functional groups of the compound changes the interferogram. The IR spectrum is obtained by a mathematical operation, a Fourier transformation on the resulting interferogram. The Fourier transform IR spectrometer has significantly better sensitivity than a dispersive instrument, as well as being a lot faster. This is the screen, the sample holder, the touchpad, and the plotter. First, place your sample in the sample holder. The keys you will use most are plot, scan, x, y, z, and the seven soft keys along the top. The function of each of the seven soft keys changes as the FTIR carries out various processes. The function that a soft key will perform at any one time is indicated by the soft key label in the box directly above it on the screen. For instance, begin with the initial screen on the FTIR. The three soft keys on the left, method, setup, and copy, currently allow you to change various parameters of the instrument or to copy spectra. Press the soft key below the word setup and the following screen appears. Now, press the soft key below the word plot and you obtain a menu which allows you to change plot parameters. For instance, press the soft key below the word axes and you have the option to turn the plotted axes on or off. Press the soft key below the word on, then press the soft key below the word exit to return to the main menu. If there is not a word on the screen above a soft key, that soft key has no function at that particular time, and if you press it, it will beep at you. A background spectrum is stored in the FTIR and is automatically subtracted from your sample spectrum. To view the current background stored in the instrument, press the background key on the keypad. This FTIR has three storage or buffer regions. They've been arbitrarily labeled X, Y, Z. If you press one of these letters on the touchpad, the spectrum stored in that region will appear on the screen. The FTIR can only store three separate spectra at one time. When you scan into one of these regions, you erase the spectrum that was previously stored in that region. To scan a sample, press Scan first. Then, choose which storage region to put your spectrum into by pressing X, Y, or Z on the touchpad. 
If there is a line of students running spectra, it's best to choose according to alphabetical order to prevent erasing a spectrum which has not yet been plotted. Therefore, look up on the screen. The letter of the storage region of the last scanned spectrum will appear in the upper left-hand corner. If it is X, press Y. Y, press Z. Z, press X. The current letter is Z. Therefore, choose X. Next, choose the number of scans, generally one or four. Note how the screen goes blank as it erases the last spectrum in the storage region X. When you press the soft key under the one on the screen, not only will this tell the instrument to scan one time, but it will tell it to go ahead and do it. In four seconds, the instrument will have scanned your sample one time, computed the spectrum, and placed it on the screen. You're now ready to plot a copy of your spectrum on a piece of paper. First, make sure that the plotter is on. To load a piece of paper, hold it lightly with the top of the paper in line with the white mark on the plotter. Then press the paper load button. Now press the plot button on the FTIR touchpad. The plotter will plot whatever is on the screen at the instant you press plot. It takes about a minute to plot your spectrum. When it's finished, you must press the paper load button on the plotter to release the paper. Do not hold on to the paper when you press this button, as it will draw the paper back up into the plotter before it releases it. You can manipulate a spectrum on the FTIR spectrometer in several ways in order to make it easier to read the peaks. If you press the touchpad key with the two arrows on it, one pointing up and one pointing down, the bands will stretch out vertically. If you press Shift, then Autex, it will expand the spectrum in the same way, but automatically. If your spectrum tends to trail down at an angle, you can flatten it. First, press Flat. Then press the soft key Auto, then press Execute. You can also superimpose up to three spectra at a time by pressing the X, Y, and Z keys simultaneously. This allows you to compare your spectrum with a spectrum of a known substance. Reference spectra are stored on floppy disks. To access a spectrum on the floppy disk, press the soft key Copy, then the soft key Disk. On the screen, a listing of the spectra stored on the floppy disk appears. Use the soft key arrows to choose which spectrum you want. Then press Enter. Now choose whether you want to put this spectrum in the X, Y, or Z buffer region. We have only touched on the numerous functions of the FTIR spectrometer. The FTIR is one of the most useful tools available to the organic chemist. Hopefully, you'll be able to run your own IR spectra throughout your second semester of organic chemistry. KBR pellets. The spectra of organic compounds that are solids at room temperature cannot be run as simply as liquids because you can't just sprinkle some compound on a salt plate and place it in the FTIR. Instead, we make a disk by mixing the sample with potassium bromide, then placing the mixture in a mechanical press. Potassium bromide, or for short KBR, has the properties that it can be pressed into a clear disc or pellet by subjecting it to 12 tons of pressure. In some ways, the KBR pellet is similar to the sodium chloride salt plate in that it is a pressed crystal of a halide salt. However, it's much smaller than the sodium chloride plate and the sample is pressed into the crystal rather than being placed on top of it. First, weigh out samples of KBR and your sample. The KBR is in small brown jars which are put in the oven when students are finished for the day. 
you need 0 0.05 grams of KBR and 0 0.001 gram of sample. In this case, Benzedrol. It takes very little sample to run a KBR pellet, and it's important you do not use too much. The weighted sample is combined in the mortar. The special mortar is made of very hard ceramic so that foreign particles will not contaminate the KBR pellet. Check to make sure that the mortar and pestle are clean, since students usually abandon them dirty in their anxiety to proceed to the next step. If it is dirty, wipe with a Kim wipe. Do not rinse with water. Grind the combined sample for several minutes until the mixture is a fine powder, like flour. The sample must be finely ground to reduce scattering losses and absorption band distortions. When finished, transfer the sample back to a piece of weighing paper. Don't forget to wipe out the mortar and pestle. Now the mixture is ready to be placed in a die set. Place a square of blotting paper with a hole in its center on the bottom of the die set. Now slide the mixture from the way paper to the hole in the blotting paper. Use a flat spatula to lightly tamp down the KBR mixture. Then carefully place the top on the die set. The die sets are made from air-hardened steel and must be placed together properly to prevent damage. The word top must read over the word bottom. Putting the die sets together properly prevents the shiny smooth inside surfaces of the die from being marred by the machine press. Smooth surfaces are necessary for good pellets. Place the die set in the press, centered on the circular base. Wind the top of the press clockwise until it stops. The top of the press must stop pointing to the right. If it does not, move the ratchet switch to the right, turn the top of the press until it's in the correct position, switch the ratchet back to the left, then wind the press until it's snug. Then place the pipe in the handle. Apply steady, firm pressure on the press for 30 seconds. Remove the pipe from the press, then unwind the press by turning it counterclockwise about one turn. Remove the die set, open it, then lift out your piece of paper with the KBR disc embedded in the center. You can carry it by any part of the paper. Good KBR pellets are transparent compared to improperly prepared pellets, which are opaque. Too much KBR or sample, insufficient grinding or pressing, can all cause the pellets to be opaque. The KBR pellet is placed on the sample holder in the spectrometer. The spectrum of the KBR pellet of Benzedrol shows good sharp bands. Compare this spectrum with the spectrum of an improperly prepared KBR pellet of Benzedrol. Note the decrease in percent transmission in the spectrum of the improperly prepared pellet. As in the thin films, sample preparation has a large effect on the quality of an FTIR spectrum. Used KBR pellets go into the jar labeled Waste KBR Pellets.